Okay. Yeah, well, that would give you uh, a certain works. authority on the subject. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's go to 008. James Bond's Offsider. Yes, indeed. Um, and what does the box say? And I can talk about it once you remind me of which one it is. <clears throat> uh, you made it in 20. You, I know what you're doing in 20, July of 2019. Um, mm -hmm. April, uh, McMurray Williams cask for 34 months. Mm -hmm. Being moved to a fourth hill ex bourbon cask 068 for a long term basic uh, rest and relaxation. Rich sherry notes with berries and tobacco. It's 58%. Um, when it comes to James Bond, there's one scene in which um, they were going to film in the, in the cast in the palace and that, and they said, Oh, look, you know, perhaps Her Majesty would like to um, just, you know, spend the day out. And they got mm -hmm. one back, and they didn't tell um, Daniel Craig this. But her mm -hmm. majesty actually decided that she wanted to play herself. So the surprise on Daniel Craig's face as her mage gets up and walks past him is actually genuine because he didn't expect <laughs> it to be QE2 doing, doing the role. Yeah. So here he is, this imaginary spy, service of imaginary queen, and QE2 actually gets up on the screen and says, oh, very good Bond. Nice. Yeah. She, she did have a good uh, sense of humour. Oh, she's been uh, with for 60 years, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, indeed, indeed. <laughs> now she she knew her gin, from what I understand. Um, yeah, well, the corgis were the main cause of wood rot in the throne, apparently. Oh. <laughs> so. Yeah, indeed. So let's just talk briefly about 008. So again, uh, for the viewers' sake, we're talking about these are samples from the Premium Amblers program. It's fifty nine dollars a month, for which you get this lovely kit each month with uh, three separate samples from the warehouse. And uh, I do a live Zoom tasting and we talk it through and I teach about whiskey. So this one is an example of um, this cognac maturation idea that uh, I've, I've spoke, I think we covered this last time, but mm. the idea that we don't just leave the whiskey in one barrel for its entire uh, maturation. What we like to do is to move it from one barrel to another so that um, it, it has a chance for the flavours to integrate. And in this case, it went from a 300 litre uh, McWilliams a pera cask, a pera being an Australian sherry, into a fourth fill ex Heaven Hill bourbon cask. And so, obviously, with the loss of Angel Share, the volume had dropped significantly enough that we could fit it into a 200 litre cask. Um, but it's a cask that is very stable and um, somewhere where we could leave it for a long period of time to rest. And integrate so the infusion of some lovely bourbon notes mm. so the the vanillas and the honeys just to add another layer to the um the lovely pair of flavors i was going to say that um why did you just give me the thumbs up i i think it it did it without me being involved i didn't touch the oh. screen you better blind tasted me on this i would have said this was a bourbon mm. the bourbon really has come through. I mean, trust me, I like um, Uncle Jack's number seven cure for being sad, um, and I'm a big fan of wild turkey at, at times, but mm -hmm. as as I'm not complaining, but yeah, for me, the um, the bourbon very much comes through. Mm. I mean, mm. you know, it's, and it's what percentage? It's 58%, yeah. Yeah. So um, you'll find a lot of distilleries will vat the barrels at the end of the process, so they're bringing together maybe whiskey from an ex-sherry cask, whiskey from an ex-bourbon cask, bring it together in a large vat, stir it up a bit, add some water and bottle it, and that's the whiskey that you buy. And the cognac tradition says, no, 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 you don't do that. You move the spirit that's been in one barrel into another barrel and let the flavours infuse over a number of months or years. Add some water as it's maturing so that at different ABV strengths, because, of course, adding the water will bring your ABV down. You will draw different characters from that cask. So you let that all happen slowly over time. And then when it's ready and properly in properly integrated, we can then bottle that. So that's very much the cognac tradition being worked at, worked through in that sample. I must admit, I, um, I've met the French in Southeast Asia and found them to be snotty pains in the ass, But... <laughs> After them chasing the magic, which they um, encourage, I might revise my um, opinion mm. 